Spotlight on verses 11 and 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to be looking there at verses 11 and 12. We do solicit your prayers, your amens. God has a word for us there. If you didn't bring your Bible, that's all right. It's going to be on the screen for you. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verses 11 and 12. It's there that we find these words recorded. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. For a few moments we like to use for such a theme. Act like a lady, think like a man. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are continuing our series based on the book movie that Steve Harvey has recorded. We left off last week in uh, Genesis chapter 29 with the story of Leah and her desire to have, and her mindset was, if I have these children, these sons, that Jacob would love her. And I trust that we learned that uh, and for this good of this century, even back in Genesis 29, that won't work. For four sons later, four C-sections later, Leah still don't have the love of Jacob. That never has worked. That's a lie from the pits of hell. So embrace that. Come to grips with the reality. They, that doesn't work. Young people listen to me. That never has worked. I know people say that they, in their mindset, they think, well, when I'm going to put it on him so good, he's going to love me. No. If you don't meet what he was expecting in a forever person, you, won't, you still won't have him. What it is, you in love with a man that don't love you. And then you end up frustrated, mad, bitter, and angry. Maybe several children later. And brothers, listen to me. Don't think, well, she had my baby. She's going to love me. No. If the standard is not, that's what she was looking for. What, what she was looking for in her husband. All you're going to have is child support payments. Hello, somebody because love doesn't come that way. It doesn't work that way. That's a ploy of the enemy, the devil, to get people to think that way. But the reality is you, that doesn't flow that way. And so if you, you, know, you weren't here, get the CD, Genesis 29. There's some real practical stuff there. Today, we want to look at commitment in terms of relationships. We'll look at commitment. In our skit, Dre does not want to make a commitment. He has a laundry list of women. He has a roster as he refers to them. But he's not making a commitment to none of them. He just has these women that some can cook and some can do this and some can do that. But he has no intentions of making a commitment. Commitment is something in order for a relationship to work, there's going to have to be a commitment. But it's something often missing in our society on the day. People don't want to make a commitment. She don't want to make a commitment sometimes. Sometimes he don't want to make a commitment for sure. So we're going to be addressing that because it's huge. And one of the major components of commitment is diligence. 
And when you look at commitment, it breaks down into diligence, patience, obedience, consistency. But I want to focus on that aspect of diligence. You, you have to be in your mind committed to the vision, to the mission, to the purpose to say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be successful at it. I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to be diligent. Now, what happens is, because I'm trying to help uh, some ladies here for just a moment, in terms for men, they have three major challenges in this area uh, of diligence so that they can be focused. Three major challenges that the devil's going to send their way. The devil's going to send their way. And when you look at relationships that get uh, uh, fractured or broken, when the man is the lead on it, generally it's going to fall in one of these three areas. Not always, but generally. And because I want to make it simple for you, they all begin with the B. Booze. Booze. Alcohol, drug gets in the way. Booze is a problem. Bucks is a problem. Money. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Sometimes he gets off into gambling. Sometimes he's chasing all the fast money. He's always changing jobs. And they have out a job. Yada, yada, yada. Sometimes he becomes a workaholic. And so, brother, she wants more of you, but you're pursuing something. And she needs you. And then the third B is booty. That can mess up relationships. Because somebody else has garnered his attention. Them three things are real. Y'all looking at me kind of quiet, but for real deal. Yeah, it's booze, bucks, and booty. Them three men deal with, and if he don't have God in his life, the devil will take one of those three, mess the relationship up, a potential relationship up, get him sidetracked. He's, if he's married and he don't have God, that's what typically happens. One of them three grabs his attention, off he's gone. Now you got an upside down family, things are fractured, not where they need to be. That's why brothers need to be in God. That's why we have to be in God, because without that, Satan, he doesn't bring a bunch of new tricks. The old tricks work, and all three of those have a history of working. Many of you, if you look into relationships you know that have gone bad, you will see one of them three was at the, at the core of what happened, why it got dissolved. Some of you that have been in relationship, yep, pastor, that is in the list. That is exactly what happened. Why? Because in the midst of, uh, of being, you know, trying to be committed and faithful, the diligence piece, he gets sidetracked. And sometimes what happens is you could be dealing with a man who is not matured enough yet to be diligent and faithful and committed. He's not there yet. He's still immature in that particular area of his life. He's irresponsible. There's a big difference between a responsible man and an irresponsible man. The responsible man views problems, challenges, as opportunities to grow, to mature. The irresponsible man always finds fault. It's never his fault. It's always somebody else's fault. And so he does not see problems as opportunities to grow. He just blames somebody else. That's what he does. So even the man, for example, the man that got caught up in, in somebody else's booty garnered his attention. Here's what he tells his wife. Girl, I wouldn't have done it, but you gained weight. Mm. Uh, girl, I wouldn't have done it, but you ain't as sensitive as you used to be. Mm. Then she ends up feeling like, wow. So she feels like she's less than a woman, and, and now she's tripping, and now she needs medicine because she's dreaming all kind of stuff, and she's in the depression, and she's off the chart. Now she feels like she's ugly. And it really had nothing to do with her and how God had developed her. It's just that in him being immature, he just said it's her fault. Rather than embrace Maybe I should have put myself in a better position so that I could grab a hold of what God is doing in my life. And said, I don't need to be in certain, certain spots getting myself in trouble, walking into temptation. Maybe I need to be in a better spot. So, brother, sometimes you got to mature and say, hey, there's some place I can't go, can't be a part of. Some things I can't get, get in, the, in an environment where I know I'm going to be enticed and then I'm going to have my house upside down. And then I'm going to turn around and blame the person. Hello, somebody. Rather than take responsibility for my own actions. That gets us jacked up. Then, what's the repercussion? Then now my family's messed up. The sons and the daughters. Everybody else is a part of all this drama. Is upside down. 
because of actions that I've taken that were not responsible actions. That instead of being on the mature side, I was on the immature side, and now I got myself in a situation. I got a lot of drama in my life. Hmm. See, when it comes to commitment, you can, ladies, you got to check out, is this man mature enough for a level of commitment? You just don't be hanging out with any, everybody got to say now, there has to be a checklist. Is he there? Because let me tell you something about somebody that's not mature enough. Because you, you, you can't be a child for relationships. It's not based on children. The relationship is for grown folks. So when 14, 15 year olds talk about relationships, I just laugh. Because they don't know what they're talking about because you ain't ready for no relationship. Because relationship is strictly grown people's business. Hello, you got to have some jobs, incomes, a whole lot goes into this. And you can't do it at 14 and 15. So you might as well go to class and learn something. And leave relationship stuff alone. See, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he said, when I was a child, when, and there was a season, a session in my life, I was a child. So I, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. There was a season and he did that. But then he said, but then he said hold it now, I ain't always been that way. So he acknowledges there was a season now that, you know, he was childish in his thinking, in his approach to things. Now, pa now Pastor, how do you recognize, what separates this man that's mature? From this little boy who's immature. There's three things I want to give you real quick that you look at. Number one, a, a man who is not really mature that's kind of irresponsible. One of the things he's going to do is he is the center of attention. He must be the center of attention. He number one. Because, you know, when you got a baby, people gravitate to the baby. They come check on Oh, there's my baby. Yada, yada, yada. They want to pick up the baby, hug the baby. And so he got to be number one. So if he ain't happy, everybody else, ain't nobody else going to be happy. But he got to be happy. He got to be satisfied. He don't care nothing about the kids. He don't care about mama coming in town. He don't care about nothing. He just knows, I want to be satisfied. And I'm here. And it's all about me. And I need a new suit. I don't care if y'all need something to eat. Get me a new suit. So he's off the charts. Because he's got to be the center of attention. Second thing he does is, the, uh, another characteristic of he get uh, just uh, a temper tantrum, just get mad, just go off, just boom, just I can't have, you know how kids do when they can't have what they want, they, you know, they want their toy, and they can't have their toy, they just throw a fit. So when, you know, when, you know, uh, he wants his remote, and you can't, you won't give it to him, he just throw a fit, he just, ah! <laughs> just throw a fit, just go off, just lost him. And so you're like, what the heck is this I got? See, I'm just trying to help you. See, that kind of stuff really exists. you got to understand something, that, that all of the terrorists are not in the Middle East. Hello, somebody. Matter of fact, one of the faults of the church, they've been acting, you know, we come in and act so safe. You need to recognize that there are people dealing with terrorists on a regular basis. Now, I ain't going to do no survey right now because maybe we ain't ready for that. But some of you know, man, I got pastor, I got some terror. I know some terrorists, pastor. And man, matter of fact, pastor, we don't, I don't need a passport to go see them. I can drive. Yeah, I can drive and see where they live. Terrorists. Straight terrorists. Train terrorists, go ballistic terrorists, off terrorists. Mm. Just, just get mad. And you know how they do. Here's, here's how you know you got one. Here's what they're going to say. I wouldn't have done it if she hadn't pushed all my buttons. Because I remember, I don't take responsibility for my actions. I got to point the finger and say, you the cause of that. And there's some female terrorists. Mm, Y'all going to make me work, huh? I tell you. There's some female terrorists too. Trained. Qualified. Can take you out, bro. Don't get it twisted. There's some female terrorists. You know some female terrorists that you can drive to go see. You ain't got to get on no airplane. Don't go to the Indy airport. You ain't got to. I got news for you. There are terrorists in Hallville, Martindale Brightwood, Center Township, Pike Township, Warren Township, Washington Township, 
Lawrence Township, Decatur Township. 